13 on your side sports, Yao Bon Su, joined by University of Michigan field hockey player Abby Tamer. Abby's coming off playing in the Olympics with the Team USA field hockey. Abby, I saw on Instagram the opening ceremony, you're decked out in your Ralph Lauren outfit. How was it riding down the Seine River on the boat alongside the best athletes in the country? Yeah, so this is probably going to be a little bit of a disappointing answer, but my team actually didn't go to the ceremony. Didn't go we to the ceremony? Up. We didn't go. We didn't go. We had a game the next day, so it really wouldn't have that been great sense. to be out. Yeah, what, what people don't realize is when you go to opening ceremonies, it's not just the ride down the boat. It's actually like six to eight hours of being on a bus, standing on your feet, watching everyone else go, waiting to get back. So not great for the day before a game, but getting to dress up and walk around the village and seeing everyone was still a very cool experience. And that was going to be my next question. Throughout your time in Paris, how often did your path cross with other members of Team USA? Well, we were in the village, so every day, I would say. Um, you'd see them in the elevators, in the dining hall, in the Team USA building. So, yeah, a lot. Do you have a particular interaction that just made you starstruck or made you fascinated or just just an interaction that you'll remember forever? During the opening ceremonies, a lot of my team, we were in the like lobby of our building and that's where the whole Team USA met before they went and a bunch of the basketball team like Curry, LeBron, Jason Tatum, a bunch of them were there. Wow. Um, so that was pretty cool. A lot of my teammates got pictures with them. And there's so much to do in Paris, the bright lights, the attractions, your family was there too. It could be easy to forget that you're there to pursue a gold medal. How did you and your team manage to stay focused throughout your time in Paris? Yeah, to be honest, when you're there, that's not really a problem. It's pretty easy to stay focused when it's at that caliber. Um, I would say more so after the tournament ends is when everyone did their sightseeing and stuff. But in the moment, we all had boundaries set with family and friends and you're in the village, so you're not going out and about. You're you're going to the field and you're going back home. Um, so honestly, that that part wasn't too challenging. And it was your Olympic debut, the Great Britain game, 5-2 loss for you guys, but you scored two goals in 20 seconds, a remarkable feat. And what was your first Olympics? Paint the picture for our audience, the feeling of scoring in one of the biggest stages in all of sports. Yeah, I mean, that was a pretty unreal feeling. I think the first three games of the tournament, I wasn't getting much going offensively. Um, so that obviously doesn't feel great as a forward. And then um, just to get one on the board just felt kind of relieving. And then to get a second one, I was like, oh, okay, here we go. We're gonna, <laughs> like, keep doing this. And despite that happening to be the, the last goal of my Olympics, of my first Olympics, um, that was a very cool game. And it didn't go our way. And it, that was the end of our hopes to get out of our pool. But um, it, it was still a very cool experience all around. And when we last spoke, you mentioned how much your family helped you get here. Your mom being a former coach of yours, your dad playing in the NHL. What was it about their advice that allowed you to ease your nerves going into Paris? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of funny because my parents both gave me one piece of advice and then gearing up for the tournament, we talked to a lot of different people, including sports psych people, former Olympians, mm -hmm. and everyone gave pretty much the exact same advice. And it was, don't make the moment bigger than it is and enjoy the moment. And that's exactly what my parents said. So I think that just goes to show how much experience they have playing at high levels and they understand what it takes and they understand the feeling that you have. So I think getting that message reinforced so many times before playing really emphasized to me how important that was. And now considering your dad played in the NHL, which would you say is harder, playing in the Olympics or playing in a Stanley Cup final? Uh, I'm going to say probably playing in the Olympics. I think it's <laughs> there you the go. world stage, but I mean, I think it's so different that obviously in the NHL, they have more eyes on them constantly. So that's got to be difficult to deal with. And I can't imagine doing that, but to go on a stage and have eyes on you once is like, okay, I really don't know how to handle this. So I think that's a little bit, and you a little bit different, but it's just a different experience. And you told me Team USA field hockey was a bit underrated going into Paris. The team finishing with one win, three losses, and a draw. Obviously, the team would have loved to make it further, but what did the team learn about itself through the Olympics? Yeah, I mean, that was all of our first Olympics, so getting that experience under our belt is going to be huge for the future. But I think we, we learned a lot of lessons, but one of the big ones was that you – really need to take every moment as its own and you need to be super present because what we found ourselves doing was kind of looking towards the end 
um, when when it started to go downhill, and that's just not a positive way to to do things. Um, but like I said, getting the experience under our belt is going to be huge for the future, and we know we're going to be at LA, so it's just a, a matter of bringing that experience forward. You ended up getting a tattoo on your arm, I saw on Instagram, of the Olympic rings. When you look down at your arm, what will you remember most? Uh, I think it's just going to be the entire experience. I don't even know what specifically will pop out, but I think being in the village, probably all the hard work beforehand and during, and then probably all the support that I have around me. And obviously to prepare for the Olympics, prepare for qualifying, you had to take a break from Michigan field hockey. But now that you're going to take advantage of your extra years of eligibility, what can you take away from your Paris experience and bring to the NCAA ranks? I think there's so many things that I've learned over the past year that are going to be beneficial for me to go back to college. And hopefully one of the biggest things that I'll be able to do is help my teammates learn some of those lessons without having to take a whole year off from school. Um, but I think... I think this past year has taught me how to really work hard, and I think I'll be able to bring that back to school. And you were younger, basically a little kid, watching the Rio 2016 games, the last time Team USA field hockey was in the Olympics. And for now, for you to be a part of that culture, that legacy, what does it mean to you? Yeah, I mean, it's a really special feeling. I think when I found out I made the team, I started crying, and I was like, I can't believe I'm going to be a part of it. And yeah, I mean, I don't even think I can really put into words what it what it means to me, but I just hope that those girls were such big role models for me and so many of my teammates that knowing that we're that team now, it's weird and it doesn't feel right, but I just hope that I can live up to their standard. And before we wrap, I got to ask you, you mentioned you saw Steph, LeBron, all these big time names and players throughout Team USA. How do you manage the emotions and avoid getting starstruck? I know you're there to handle business, but it's got to be cool being around all those athletes. Yeah, no, you're definitely right. That's actually something we talked about beforehand about what, like, what are you going to do if you see, like, <laughs> Nadal? And some of my teammates did see Nadal and Alcaraz, and we're like, what? I don't even know. <laughs> we're on the same level as them? I don't know how that works, but um, I think – we were in the village for a while before the tournament started. So those first couple of days are when you're, you kind of let yourself be a little starstruck and like, Oh my God, there's Simone Biles. And then once tournament time comes around, you're like, okay, I got to do everything for me and for my team right now. And I think it's pretty easy to switch it, switch it on and off, to be honest. Next Olympics is in 2028, Los Angeles. Can we hope, can we look forward to seeing Abby Tamer in the Olympics in Los Angeles? My plan is to stick around. It's a matter of, am I going to be able to make the team again? Am I going to be able to stay healthy? Um, but I'm not stopping anytime soon. So, Two goals yeah. in 20 seconds. I mean, we could expect to see you in L.A., that's for sure. University of Michigan field hockey player Abby Tamer coming off playing in the Olympics with Team USA field hockey. Abby, congratulations on all the success, and we look forward to seeing more of your dominance, not only with Michigan, but Team USA in the future. Thank you. Thanks for having me.